All right. Well, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started. We do have a lot to get through today, so I'm going to um, share my screen. And I just want to confirm that individuals can see my screen share. Yep, we got gotcha. you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Amy. I realized that my date is wrong. I forgot to update it from Tuesday's training, so apologies. But I think we all know that today is Thursday, July 13th. And welcome to CORE's Digital Technology and Literacy and Cultural Orientation Knowledge Exchange. Um, today, I'm joined uh, by a couple of different folks, so I want to take some time to introduce um, those who are on the call. Uh, first of all, my name is Ella Fowler. I am the Research and Learning Officer with CORE. I'm joined today by three of my CORE colleagues, including Amy Franz. Um, she is helping us on the back end. If you have any technical questions, Amy can assist you with that, so feel free to use the chat. She'll also be supporting me and sharing uh, resources in the chat and asking you all questions in the chat. So a huge shout out and thank you to Amy for, for all her hard work. You're also going to hear today from Mala Kakar our, and Tu Phillips, who are my core colleagues, who are going to talk to you about um, our Settle In work, and Tu's going to talk to you about our domestic CO curriculum. So thank you to um, our core facilitators joining us today. We're also going to hear from RSD Eurasia, Irina Selenkova is here to talk to us about how um, CO is delivered at RSC Eurasia. Um, and we're also joined today by numerous other RSC colleagues who we are going to engage with throughout this knowledge exchange. In addition to these facilitators, we also have a couple other folks who are helping us out today in the breakout room. So a shout out and a thank you gratitude to those of you who volunteered to do that. Um, and they will help navigate uh, the breakout rooms that we have at the end of this call. And I'll talk about that um, a little bit later. So a few reminders. Um, if this is your first core uh, webinar or learning opportunity that you're joining, welcome. Um, we want to, you to know that our webinars are very interactive. So if you are here today, please give me your next, the next 90 minutes of your time. And I want you to go ahead and close out your Microsoft Office. I want you to close out of whatever you use to um, uh, whatever you use to um, communicate with other staff uh, at your agency. Um, we will be using Slido today on Zoom chat and asking you to discuss verbally. And so we really want you to be present. Uh, we just got a request that for someone to ask for this meeting to be recorded locally. Please know that we are recording this webinar already um, and we will be sending out the webinar recordings and the materials in one week. So we are going to deny that uh, local uh, uh, the request to record locally and just know that we are sharing things out. I do tend to talk a little fast, so if you do need closed captioning enabled, Amy has uh, provided instructions for you in the chat on how to do so. You can simply uh, click closed captioning and enable it on your, uh, on your end. I also want to just remind everybody that today's webinar um, is 90 minutes long instead of our normal 60 minutes. And the uh, other thing I want to share is that this is the second webinar um, that CORE is using this type of structure. Uh, we did our first one on Tuesday, and so we do hope that um, we, or we do hope you have patience with us as we're still trying to navigate this new structure and um, try out this new learning opportunity. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Amy. Ella is a fast, efficient talker. I really, really am. All right, folks. Um, so we're going to go ahead and move on. Um, to what the, the, the Zoom feature that we're going to use today. So we hope that a lot of you already know how to use a lot of the Zoom features that are available because we've been delivering and uh, remote learning opportunities for a while now. But there is a new uh, feature in Zoom in the chat, which is the chat reply feature. And we are going to be using that feature today. So we want to take a moment to test it out um, and share with you how to, how to use this feature. So Amy has put out test out the reply here if you want. And if you want to test out how to reply, Simply follow the screenshots that you see here and go ahead and reply to her test. But we will be using this feature a little later on in today's webinar. Um, and you can also use it to engage with each other. There is also uh, thumbs up and reactions if you want to use those um, to like other people's comments. All right, I see Martin and Nashalini has used it. Irina, Sarah, wonderful. All right, the other feature we're gonna be using today is Slido. And so we want you to go ahead and uh, go, go to slido.com right now so that you are already ready um, and prepared uh, to answer our Slido questions. Um, so you can either scan the QR code with your phone's camera on the right, or you can go to slido.com. Amy um, has put the link in the chat. 
Um, and <clears throat> you can enter the code to be able to do the responses. Thank you so much for letting us know, Meredith. I wonder if it's uh, if it's due to what type of Zoom you're uh, using to access today. If maybe you're using the web version, it might not be available. So in that case, please just engage with us um, as you normally would. So do folks already have um, Slido open? Please go ahead and let me know that Slido is up and on your screen using the chat feature. Thank you, Natalie. She's ready to go with Slido. Yep, the Slido link is in the is in the chat. Um, it's slido.com. For some reason, it's not hyperlinking above, um, but you can go ahead and copy and paste. You do not need to sign into Slido as the instructions say here. You go to slido.com and we need you to enter the code 2060632. And that will allow you to be ready to answer the questions that we have with Slido as soon as they become available on my screen. You're seeing comments and questions from two days ago. Well, you know what? I'm new to Slido and this is a lesson that I'm learning um, that this is the second webinar. And so I didn't duplicate the questions and I didn't know that you guys were gonna get to see the responses. But you know what? That's okay. We're gonna go with it today and you'll be able to build upon the responses of our colleagues from Tuesday. So it looks like a lot of folks are already in um, to Slido. So we're gonna go ahead and um, move on. So our objectives today are that we really want to explain what is required with the topic of digital technology and literacy. We want to identify when in the resettlement process you can collaborate with others to address refugees' unique digital needs. We're going to break off into breakout rooms and we're going to design a CO session on this topic for a specific refugee persona. So we can talk about how can we deliver this topic with considerations for a variety of learners. And then we really hope to engage with other CO providers um, on how to message and deliver this topic um, with each other. So we really hope that you uh, are ready to engage today and share your experiences. Um, Jean, thank you so much for that question. We'll put that code uh, for Slido in the chat. Wonderful, thank you, Andy. So how are we gonna accomplish these objectives today? Well, we already did our icebreaker. Next, we're gonna really talk about what is in the digital technology and literacy CO ONI. What are we expected to cover as part of CO programming? And then we're going to go and talk about digital technology across the CO continuum. We're going to hear from our uh, facilitators today, Irina Malat and Tu, who are going to talk about their work and how it can support um, this topic. Then we're going to go into a break, and then we're going to go into breakout rooms where we are going to design a CO session on digital technology and literacy, and then we are going to wrap up today. So to kick things off, I would like you all to share in the chat. What do you know about the digital technology and literacy COONI? So using the Zoom chat feature, what do you know about the digital technology and literacy COONI? And if you don't know anything, that's okay. We acknowledge that in that space that you might be really, really new to this. And please just let us know, uh, and we welcome you and your experience. All right, so Muhammad, adapting new technology is digital tech and lit. Okay, it's about the use of applications, says Daniel. And it's okay to say nothing, absolutely. Sarah, you're new to this role. Welcome, Sarah. We're really excited that you're here. Amy, what is CO, CO and I? Absolutely. So uh, CO, O and I is the cultural orientation objectives and indicators. So the cultural orientation objectives and indicators are what um, PRM requires us to cover as part of cultural orientation programming. And they provide us with a framework uh, for what we need to cover in cultural orientation and really help ground us in um, our CO delivery and allow us to create a cultural orientation continuum. So CO ONI is a new acronym for you today. There might be some information that's gonna be of, of your knowledge level. And that's okay. I do welcome you um, to visit some of the COONI resource page that Amy has put in the chat. And we also did a COONI training series last month um, to provide some baseline knowledge on what the COONIs are. And this is to build up on that training. So um, just wanna give that uh, out there and that apology today if this webinar is a little above your, your knowledge level. 
Um, all right, I'm also seeing Meredith, objectives are about the ability to use tech for services in the US and the other is about tech, using tech safely. Perfect, thank you, Meredith. That, that, that sums it up really well. David, main focus is on learners understanding and need, importance and safety. Digital literacy will be key for refugees to gain autonomy once they arrive in the US. Absolutely, thank you, Giovanni. Um, it focuses on how applicants will be exposed to different types of technology when they resettle, and the other focuses, focus will be on spam and what is spam. Great. Thank you, everyone, for, for sharing um, what you know about this topic in the chat. I hope to build upon this today and really help ground you all in what do we cover uh, with this topic in cultural orientation programming and how can we collaborate with others at our agency to address refugees' unique digital literacy needs. So I first want to share some background um, on the uh, digital technology and literacy COONI. So if uh, you joined us last month, you learned that the there was a task force that was tasked with um, looking at the COONIs and revising them. And that group really uh, felt that digital technology is playing a major role in our lives here in the US. I don't know about you, um, but I engaged with technology uh, numerous times today. And there are many things I wouldn't have been able to do, like pay my bills, um, if I didn't have access uh, to the internet and to know how to navigate it safely. Um, so recognizing this role, uh, the topic was added um, to the COONI, both overseas and domestically. Where appropriate, other topics were also updated to include objectives or indicators related to digital technology and literacy as needed. I want to stress that um, there has been delivery of this topic um, by overseas resettlement support centers. They delivered this topic as part of the ONI user testing that CORE conducted last fall. And so the reason we have our RSCs joining us today and we're hearing from RSC Eurasia is they're able to present out some challenges they've already faced in incorporating this topic into their CO delivery. And they really wanted to have this exchange so that we could all work together to really improve um, how we deliver messaging around this topic. All right, so to help ground us in what are the COONIs, um, I really just want to take a moment and have us read the uh, the, the digital literacy COONI. This is, comes directly from the overseas and the domestic COONI. As you can see, we have the same objective in both overseas and domestic for digital technology and literacy. We put a star where the overseas indicators continue. Um, so as you can see in objective one, the first two indicators are presented on overseas CO and they continue in domestic CO. So the CO ONI for digital technology and literacy remain the same for overseas to domestic, but in overseas, you don't have to deliver all of the ONIs, only the ones with the stars next to them. So I want folks to take a moment and uh, review the COONIs here. And when you're done, write down in the chat box. Great, I'm seeing some dones in the chat box. Uh, I don't know about you all, but I review these the COONIs on a daily basis in my work. Um, I'm constantly going to CORE's website. I'm constantly checking our PDF. Just what are we expected to cover in um, cultural orientation programming? And so now that we've read the what is to be covered um, in digital technology and literacy, when we're talking about um, that as part of CO, it can mean a lot of different things, right? Digital technology can mean a lot of different things. And this can feel very overwhelming. And so I wanna take a moment and really ground us in what digital technology and literacy focus on. And Meredith already shared this earlier in the chat, which is this topic focuses on the awareness that refugees will interact with technology as part of their resettlement process and how they can interact with technology safely. The topic of digital technology and literacy is like the CO topic of learning English. In the topic of learning English, uh, it does not require CO programs to teach refugees English. Instead, it focuses on the need for refugees to learn English and where and how to do so. Digital technology and literacy is extremely similar to this. As noted before, <clears throat> we do have digital technology and literacy covered under other CO topics. And it's in these uh, topics, we have indicators that specify what refugees need to be able to do or say related to digital technology. This is where we stated specific skills they are required to have by the end of the resettlement process. For example, being able to uh, have one method to contact their resettlement agency. 
being able to navigate their public assistance benefits, whether that is being able to navigate the application themselves or being able to know where to go to do so. So let's go ahead and do our first Slido, which um, I want you all to select which cultural orientation topics contain digital technology components. So when we're thinking about the COO and I's and the objectives and indicators, what other topics talk about digital technology and literacy? So go ahead and navigate to Slido, Navigo, navigate to slido.com and enter number 2060632 and go ahead and answer this question. And do let me know if there's issues answering this question given that we use this on Tuesday. Again, I'm new to Slido, so. There shouldn't be any issues, Ella, so don't, don't worry about that. It's just like I answered it on Tuesday, so then it opens the, the answer I gave before. Okay. All right, so I am seeing some answers trickle in. And uh, as Amy has shared, if you're having any trouble, go ahead and use the chat to let us know what CO topics do you think contain digital technology components. All right, so seeing a lot of answers trickling in. Great, thank you guys. So let's go ahead and look at this. I put together uh, the CO topics that contain digital technology components. So highlighted in blue here, these are topics that actually list specifically objectives or indicators related to digital technology and literacy. So for example, under the role of the resettlement agency is where we talk about that communication method. Um, when, under the public assistance, that's where we talk about the uh, ability to be able to manage their public assistance benefits. And if those are submitted online, they need to be able to manage that or know where to go to do so. Um, so CORE has put together, and we looked at all of the COONIs, both overseas and domestically. So this is across the continuum, not just an overseas CO and not just domestically, but working together to assess what do refugees need to say, do, or act as it comes as it relates to digital technology and, and literacy. Um, we will send out this image uh, with uh, post-session materials. I know that it can be a little bit, um, maybe a little bit overwhelming, but I just really wanna emphasize that a lot of this, again, is to raise awareness that they're gonna interact with technology, how to do so safely, and giving them the resources in, in the local community um, to be able to improve their digital literacy skills, just like we do with learning English. So I want to acknowledge that this is not an easy topic for not only ourselves, but even for uh, the clients that we work with. So we're going to navigate back to Slido, and we, I want you all to share what are some of the top challenges you're currently facing with the topic of digital technology and literacy? Right. Some things are trickling in, um, but I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of view some of these challenges um, so that we can we can see them. And CORE is going to compile these challenges, and we are going to send you out resources to help you work on these. And we do hope that we are able to um, address some of these, these today. Um, so somebody said creating a topic surrounding or creating a curriculum around this new topic and uh, figuring out how to do that effectively and ensure that beneficiaries understand and apply them. Absolutely understand that challenge. And I'm really hoping that uh, when you hear from two today, that will be helpful in kind of seeing how you can uh, work to apply this topic um, to, the, to the work that you do. Um, digital technology and literacy requires actual English literacy. Um, I don't know if, whoops. Uh, thank you to the to the person that put that in there, but I would actually um, disagree with you. Uh, I think that there are that people can have uh, acquire digital technology and literacy skills um, and not and not have English literacy. Uh, we did learn about that during remote CO delivery, and I think there were many folks we were able to help acquire uh, those skills um, and when they didn't have English English literacy skills. Um, and so hopefully today we can we can talk to you about some ways that you can um, uh, work with folks who don't speak, who don't have English literacy. Um, some people don't know how to use technology at all. Absolutely. Uh, in our training on Tuesday, um, we heard from RSC Asia, who works with a lot of um, individuals who don't interact with technology and don't have any questions about digital technology until they actually get to cultural orientation. Um, but that's the that's why we work together as a cultural orientation continuum, right? 
And so our overseas colleagues are helping to build a framework on this topic. And then domestically, we're trying to, to build upon that topic. Now, we recognize again that the what's outlined in the COONI is not going to meet the needs of every client that you work with. And you are going to have to work with your local community um, to be able to identify how to address uh, refugees' unique needs. And this may mean creating frameworks for digital literacy programs that meet not only refugees' needs, but other community needs um, that you may have. So for those of you who are on the domestic side of things, um, let's see. There's poor internet, lack of access to internet, functioning devices. Many of our applicants are not digitally literate. Absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of similarities that you guys can see across the top. You know, we're seeing a, a lot of you use the same word. Whoops. And I hope today that we will be able to um, really address some of these challenges and give you some ideas on how to uh, address them in, in CO delivery. Um, all right. So now we're going to go ahead and talk about digital technology and literacy across um, the CO, uh, CO continuum. And so first, I want to just share out with everybody in our registration, we asked you all to share how cultural orientation is currently delivered at your agency 80% of the time. And so less than 1% of you are currently delivering um, CO over the phone 80% of the time. Um, so we're really seeing a transition back to remote and in-person CO delivery. 26% of you uh, are delivering remotely, um, CO remotely online 80% or more of the time, and 73% are delivering CO in person 80% of the time or more. So again, you all, the 160 or so individuals who registered for this training gave us this data. Um, and so we wanted to share it out with, for, with you all as kind of like a knowledge exchange on how CO is being delivered both overseas and domestically. Now, as I said before, we work really together as a CO continuum to deliver cultural orientation. So in our CO and I uh, webinar series, we talked about how um, we, the CO continuum is a site collaborative effort of global resettlement staff to deliver CO in alignment with the CO and I and create a continuum of consistent messaging for refugees resettling to the US. We know that refugees have questions throughout the resettlement process, not just during overseas domestic CO or when they're in their, their new community. And so when we all are uh, aware of and know what is covered in the COO and I, we can all create a continuum of messaging that's consistent and clear for refugees as they're going through the resettlement process. Um, so today we're gonna look at the resettlement process, pre-departure and um, post-arrival. And to help us do this, we here at CORE have created a general timeline of resettlement services um, that we can all kind of look at. We've created a refugee persona with our RSC Eurasia colleague, Irina, to help really focus our discussion and talk about how would CO be delivered to this particular refugee persona as they navigate the CO continuum, and how can we deliver this digital technology and literacy to this persona as they navigate and interact with other individuals who may have higher or lower literacy in our CO sessions or outside of our CO sessions. Um, and then really identify when we, uh, refugees may ask their questions about their digital technology concerns so that we can talk about how we as a CO continuum um, can help support refugees unique needs. So our persona today is as follows. We do have a Ukrainian persona. Um, so their background information is here on the top left. Uh, we have languages and literacy in the top right, digital skills and digital technology and literacy concerns. We're gonna put a link to this persona in the chat. I'm not gonna unpack it completely for you all right now, just due to time, but just a few highlights is that we have two adults with three children. Um, they do have a US tie. They uh, have access to the internet and they do um, have uh, basic digital literacy skills and it's part of their everyday life. They speak Ukrainian and Russian, um, but they have no English skills. And so um, they're, they're accessing everything in Ukrainian and Russian. Um, and they do have some digital technology and literacy concerns. Um, so we will be using this persona throughout today. Amy put a link in the chat. Please let her know if you can't access it. Um, but we encourage you to pull it up on your screen so you can reference it as we go through. Now, this is a general timeline of over uh, these uh, CO services. And so we wanted to share when during overseas services would this particular Ukrainian persona or our family interactive technology as part of their resettlement process. 
And when may they have questions about technology as it relates to their, their digital concerns? So for our persona, we know that Okasana is concerned about digital safety and keeping her children safe online. And Ivan has heard that refugees are often targeted by scams. So during the overseas resettlement process, um, Ivan and Okasana might have questions during their pre-screening interview, during their case assurance, when they're in overseas CO, as they're interacting with technology, these questions might come up. So now I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it over to um, our RSD uh, colleagues who are going to talk to us a little bit about how this persona would receive overseas CO. Um, do, do you hear me now? Because I'm sorry, my laptop was like being funny. Do you yes, hear me now? We can hear okay. you now. I'm sorry, I had to reconnect from my um, I, uh, my my phone. Okay, um, so um, hello again. Uh, hello, my name is Irina. I work at the um, RSC Eurasia as a project assistant at the cultural orientation team. So um, yeah, as I'm sorry, I was um, had uh, difficulties hearing what was Ella telling you before, but. Um, I'll just start here. So let's have a look what um, the overseas resettlement process will look for um, our persona, for this persona. Um, at the moment, uh, probably this Ukrainian family is located in Ukraine in a city called Ternopil. They live in a little apartment um, that they own and in the home they have internet and they have quite good mobile internet coverage. And some of the family members, as you see, they use their smartphones. So the resettlement process for them is quite um, complicated because in order to visit the RSC office for some of the stages for their resettlement process, for their application processing, they need to travel outside of Ukraine because at the moment we do not carry any activities in Ukraine, Russia or Belarus. So if there is any in-person meeting, they have to visit our offices. Most probably they will come to our office in Warsaw. And um, the families throughout the whole resettlement, resettlement process communicates with the RSC with um, via phone calls and emails and uh, sometimes uh, they might be, we might ask them to, to share some uh, missing paperwork, so they will be um, uh, sending this also via email, meaning they know how to use uh, scanning and uh, photos, uh, so um, uh, Ella, can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, thank you, Ella. So let's now have a look how the overseas virtual CEO will be, um, yeah, what, but I'll explain you now why it's gonna be virtual, but how the overseas CEO will be delivered for this persona. So as I told you, because this persona is located in Ukraine and unfortunately we are not able now to um, deliver them in person CEO. So most probably we will have a virtual session for them and um, so they will try because they will travel outside of Ukraine just right before the departure. So their CO session usually happens about three weeks before the departure, maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit less. So here you can see these are the actually uh, the programs that um, we use while delivering the virtual CO at the moment. So we use Microsoft Forms for, um, well, we send call of interest and we also use it when we verify the attendance at the beginning of the session. The session itself is delivered via Zoom. And we've recently just uh, moved all our um, CEO contact to Kahoot, and we share Kahoot um, through Zoom. If you don't know what Kahoot is, it's um, an uh, online um, game-based learning platform where you can create various like puzzles, quizzes. You can just also share like content, like text, videos. So the whole session is like a game where they get different scores. And recently we've just received um, a feedback, our quarterly feedback, which was actually quite positive in regards of the Kahoot. A lot of our applicants noted that it was very interactive and um, uh, very interactive and very um, engaging for the participants. And even though it lasts for about like three and a half hours, they didn't feel it so. 
So we share Kahoot through Zoom. So this is how we facilitate our uh, session. So you can see that already during the virtual session, we use quite a lot of um, technologies. So of course we will have, uh, we could have some technical issues as always, as I'm having now, you can see. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, uh, Ellen, next slide, please. Before we go on to the next slide really quickly, um, I just want to stress that RSC Eurasia delivers CO three weeks before departure. We heard on Tuesday that RSC Asia delivers CO one month before departure. I have asked in the chat if other RSCs could share when they deliver CO. So if you could go ahead and elaborate on that. Um, all right, so moving on to you, Irina. Okay, thank you, Ella. Um, so here, I would like to share with you some statistics um, about digital literacy in Ukraine. And um, you will understand now why this is kind of important because after looking at the statistic, you can really understand um, which challenges might arise and uh, which questions our applicants might have. We've also built our persona based on these statistics. So 88% um, of Ukrainians have used internet in the past three months, which would mean that a lot of people know how to use internet. They know what it is, at least. And the most popular place for using would be home, and the most popular device would be a smartphone. Um, 40, about 48% uh, of the Ukrainians um, have the digital skills below basic level, and around 11% of Ukrainians have zero digital skills, and in this group there would be a lot of um, older people. Uh, so around 46% of Ukrainians have, expect, uh, have experienced security problems through the use of the internet over the past 12 months, which means even though um, they would have basic, quite good or whatever kind of digital skills, but the digital internet security awareness about that is still quite low in the country. So... Um, out of this, which challenges can we have? Well, the first challenge, obviously, it's not connected with the statistics. It's that we have very limited time frame for our sessions online and even in person. And um, our information that we oversee see what delivers is quite general in its nature. So you have to try to cover a bit of everything during one session. Um, the next would be what you can see from the statistics is the age group. So in one group, you will have people who are whose digital skills are quite uh, younger generation uh, whose digital skills are good, older generations uh, with uh, the opposite. Uh, but uh, if it's a family, uh, of course, they can uh, support each other. Sometimes younger members of families, they support older members of um, our family, of, of families. Um, so if it's an in-person session would be delivered in uh, our office, unfortunately in RSCs, we cannot use any gadgets. So that's also kind of a challenge. We cannot use uh, even the, the stuff. We're not allowed to use our smartphones. So as the participants, so it will be a bit of a challenge try to explain what internet and smartphone is when you cannot actually even have it in the office. Uh, well, um, I think that's it uh, for this slide. Ella, could we go to the next one, please? Um, so here um, I would like to share with you what kind of questions sometimes arise from our participants. Um, the biggest concern I would say would be still the um, we, we, we need to stress more on the importance of the digital security, like how to protect personal data and how to recognize a digital scam. For example, during our last in-person session, one of uh, my colleagues shared with me, it was very interesting, one of the participants, his question was, um, do actually uh, online scammers exist in the U.S.? So for them, it was a surprise that it can be uh, also somewhere outside of our countries. Um, other questions uh, could be regarding the security. I've had, um, for example, uh, why do we need to change passwords often? Um, sometimes people, for example, could know, older uh, applicants could know what digital map is, but they wouldn't know that digital map can also help you to 
make a route for the public transport. So the question, they would be surprised um, and to know how do I, the question would be, how do I get uh, somewhere by public transport? And it would be surprised for them that um, you can also use digital maps for it. I would uh, like to ask my uh, colleagues from other RSCs also to share with me um, what questions were you getting while uh, delivering digital um, this ONI um, from your applicants. In, could you please share it in the chat? I'm using my phone. I don't really, I don't, unfortunately. Ella, do we have any? Um... We are getting some, we're getting some questions. If you would like, Irina, I'm happy to take it over, uh, take over the activity at this, at this time. Oh, like thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you to Irina um, for her presentation. I'm going to step in here uh, and facilitate this activity due to uh, internet connections and uh, <clears throat> kind of just talking it through. So, uh, as we have asked, so for those of you who are working on RSC, if you could go ahead and share questions that you get. So Giovanni, thank you for yours on the official means of communication with the RAs when they don't have a cell phone. Uh, what is an unsecure network? Is my phone going to work in the US? Um, so if you're at an RSC and you're getting any other questions, now's the time to throw those in the chat because we're actually going to ask our domestic colleagues how they would answer these questions. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Meredith. Um, any other questions from the other RSC? You can go ahead and add those questions in the chat. Um, but what I would like now is if you are a domestic, I want you to read these, these questions and I want you to answer, provide an answer to it in the chat feature. So how would you respond to this question if you were overseas? So again, use that chat reply feature we showed you earlier. To respond back to questions like, do online scammers also exist in the US? How do I know how to get somewhere by public transport? What are the official means of communication? So if now is the time that you want to share some key messages that you think need to be an overseas CO. Um, or if, you know, now is the time to share. How do you want the how do you want our overseas staff to answer some of these questions or what might be some information be helpful for them to know? Um, also, you can share in the chat, like what are some Thing, key messaging that you uh, think would be helpful for this topic. So maybe we can talk about if it is something that we can cover. Uh, so James already responded to uh, do online scammers also exist in the US? Um, yes, and we'll help, we will help you learn how to identify them. Great, so some thoughts are coming through. So um, I would, is it a must to have an email account? That's a great question, Nathalini, um, that you get, they must get overseas. So go ahead, um, domestic folks, and take some time to continue um, looking at some of these questions. Uh, but one of the things we want to note is that when we are delivering over CTO, as Irina shared with us, one of, a big challenge is time um, and having time to cover all of the topics that are in um, the COO and I, just like we have domestically. And then also she talked a little bit about uh, just having access to smartphones and the tools that they need when they're doing in-person CO to be able to uh, really delve into this topic. And so it's really important to remember that while this is an overseas CO topic, it's important to continue repetition in domestic um, cultural orientation and to just continue to build upon what they may what they heard about in overseas cultural orientation. Thanks, Bella. Uh, just making sure you can hear me okay. Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Um, thanks so much. Very excited to be here. Um, and thanks very much, Ella, for introducing this Rohingya refugee persona. Um, we're going to um, look at a few aspects of resettlement um, overseas and cultural orientation um, for this family in particular. Um, so what what would the overseas resettlement and CO delivery process look like for this family? Um, for this Rohingya family persona, they would likely live in an urban environment, so a small apartment or a shared living space, um, and not a refugee camp. Um, 
the children would likely be attending school and the parents may or may not be uh, working inside of the home or outside of the home. Um, the resettlement process is going to include a lot of visits to various offices, including UNHCR office, um, the resettlement support center offices um, throughout the processing of their application. So the families experience overseas with the digital platforms um, and devices. It's as Ella mentioned, it's going to be across the um, the continuum, and it's going to be um, at multiple points throughout their application. Um, a lot of the pieces are going to be through phone calls and emails, uh, inviting the family to the required processing steps overseas, um, and also when the family is requesting updates on their case status. So how and when might uh, cultural orientation be delivered on this topic um, for this family in particular? So the when is going to be about one month prior to departure. And um, as anyone at an RSC knows, that could definitely change. It might be a little longer, it might be a little bit sooner, but on average, we, we try to do at least uh, one month before departure. Um, but the digital technology is going to be covered, obviously, according to the ONIs and now the new ONIs. Um, and for RSC Asia, we'll include a new and separate session that focuses on digital technology specifically um, and, and one that we were able to uh, user test a little bit um, earlier this fiscal year. Um, okay, I'm going to go on to the next one. Thanks, Ella. So when might um, this family ask some of their questions or have some concerns on digital literacy? Um, questions and concerns are going to arrive uh, during cultural orientation, most likely, um, once the topic of digital literacy and technology is introduced. So when the family learns about searching for employment online, um, about the importance of protecting their family um, by not sharing passwords, and whether there's internet or um, phone data available once they're in the U.S., um, so I, I do want to pause and ask my RSC colleagues on the call. Um, I want to ask what kinds of questions that you all are receiving about this topic in particular from the refugees. Um, are, are we getting digital literacy and technology questions? Um, what kinds of questions are they? Are they related to certain topics? Um, and whether it's in cultural orientation or it's in one of the other processing steps. Um, so please do put your questions in the chat and um, I will go through those and, and we'll use them a little bit in, in just a few minutes. Yeah, great. Can our current phones be used in America? How do we get internet there? Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Nisha. Uh, yes, cool. Similarities and differences between platforms and apps. Yep. Great. Loving the RSC Asia participation. Um, all RSCs, I would love to hear from you. You know, we have a very wide range of digital um, literacy among refugees throughout the world. So please do share. Yep. How do I get around when in the US? Okay, please continue to um, include your questions. Um, you can continue populating those. I'm gonna go on, but we'll come back to the questions as you put them in the chat. Um, okay. So some of the, oh, that's great. Uh, let's see, before we go to that question, so sorry, Ella, I just want to share a little bit about one of the challenges that we had within RSC Asia. So some of the challenges, and I'm sure you all have faced the same, um, when we when we brought up this topic during user testing, and, and even when we talk about it in, in other ways within CO, um, 
the challenges we faced and ones we anticipate continuing to face in the future were when family members who were less familiar with technology compared to some of their other family members, um, they just had a little bit more of a struggle um, uh, being able to understand some of the concepts and then implement those pieces. So luckily with big families like this, they do have some internal kind of built in support. Um, but but we'll be addressing those in classes um, in the future to ensure that all family members can can meet the, the digital literacy learning objectives. Um, OK, now we can go on to the next one. And I am going rather quickly, but hopefully I am within time. So now we want to consider some of the common questions RFCs are receiving. Um, so for our domestic CO providers, um, our domestic colleagues uh, giving cultural orientation, um, we want to know uh, and kind of want to think through what are some of the type of information that you would want to share um, overseas. Um, you know, knowing what you know about your locale and how refugees navigate through the resettlement process in your city, um, what would you want to make sure that the refugee knows or understands? Um, so we have a lot of really great questions in the chat. Um, where can I receive the US SIM card? Can I use my phone there too? Do we trust everyone? We interact with on social media. Um, I would love if you all uh, are able to either reply to each of these questions, or you can you can read the question and then just put your answer in at the bottom of the chat as well. But if you're able to reply to some of the questions that the RSCs have put in the chat box and just share what how how you would respond to this question overseas and and how you feel like it would be um, best addressed. We'll see if we get replies in here if my <laughs> my uh, instruction is clear. And if, if there isn't a question that strikes you or you don't know how you would advise to answer it, go ahead and share that. I noticed that some in the challenges share out some folks express like a uh, challenge of their own digital literacy. That's OK. Mm. This is a safe space. Let's, let's talk about those mm. things. Or if you just have a key message that you want to share with the RSCs that you would like them to consider to cover in on this topic, now's the time to kind of share those, those ideas and thoughts. There's confusion about difference in communicating via WhatsApp versus American phone service. That's great. Really... I feel like that's an answer to some of these mm -hmm. questions. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Lori. Yeah. And I know, um, you know, this question of do we trust everyone we interact with on social media? You know, that's such such a such an important question and one that is you know that that we could take many days and weeks to answer um and something that we would cover definitely broadly and introduce you know important safety pieces overseas um and then i'm sure the domestic side would continue continue with more specific um safety pieces once they're in the US so that's great Oh, I lost it. Understanding, Tom said, understanding the basics of email, accessing, sending, and receiving, and send receiving messages via cell phone and, if possible, smartphone. Great. Very good. Very broad and general. And one thing I want to say about that, Tom, is if that's something that you're asking the RSEs to cover overseas, we have to remember the varying uh, literacy levels um, and just like domestically, RSCs have to consider that too. So in this particular um, scenario with our Rohingya population, achieving this would be very difficult because they have very low digital literacy skills. And as Jenny shared, by the time they probably aren't thinking about this when they get to CO, 
um, and their their questions are going to be a little bit more basic. And so this um, objective or this skill building would probably take place more domestically than it would overseas for this this persona. Yeah, it definitely would depend on the person within the family. It depends on which location from RSC Asia that the family is coming from. If they're primarily, um, you know, relying on maybe a child or a grandchild for uh, communicating with the RSC, then then they may not um, be able to meet this. Um, and certainly folks coming out of some of the refugee camps may not have as much digital literacy. Um, but we do we do have a fair amount of people who communicate with us by email um, or by WhatsApp. It's uh, it's just a matter of finding something that is applicable to to everyone. So, yeah, that, I hear you, Tom, awareness about uh, over this over literacy. And as Jenny says, um, they definitely talk about communicating with the role uh, with the resettlement agency because that is under that uh, topic, making sure that refugees know how to communicate. But because they are overseas, they don't know what your communication tools are on the domestic side. If you're going to be using email, if you use WhatsApp more to communicate, if you use the phone. And so they'll, they're able to introduce that idea and under, and help refugees understand they're going to need to use technology to communicate with their resettlement agency, but it's going to be domestically where you're going to build on and really show which specific tool do they need to use um, to communicate with the resettlement agency. Mm. And I, I also want to highlight a really great um, answer to Hannah's question, will I receive a phone or computer when I arrive to the U.S.? And we got a really good response. A phone will be given to the PA, but a computer is not given. If you want to get a computer, it would be something to save up for over time. Um, so maybe I can I can kind of close out with this, um, Ella, if you're okay with that. I I uh, I really love this response, and I think that it is um, something that is very indicative of a specific location and locale, um, and it's great. Um, also, it may not be the case for every single resettlement agency. Some um, may not have the funds to provide um, a new phone for, for every single PA, or they may try and um, source it from, from a different way. So I want to share um, what many of you probably know already, but that much of the overseas cultural orientation responses to these questions are going to be quite general in nature. Um, as uh, we want to not only introduce sometimes very brand new concepts to our applicants and, and refugees, but also we will need to keep the information um, applicable to all cities and all states and all resettlement agencies. Um, so while you know some RAs are able to provide a lot more than others, um, we do want to make sure that we give the 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 most accurate information for um, that's applicable to everyone. And then, of course, the specifics are going to be covered um, by our domestic colleagues, and uh, you'll be able to go through all of those details with them once they reach stateside. Um, so unless I missed anything, Ella, I will, I will hand it back to you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jenny. That was, that was great. All right, so I want folks to continue to um, answer those questions in the chat. I'm going to move on to a timeline of domestic CO services. Um, so we put together again, looking at the domestic side of services, a timeline of when these services would take place. So the first row is kind of those services in the first seven days. The next is the services in the first uh, 30 days. And then the last is kind of within the first 90 days. Again, how the uh, digital technology and literacy will be delivered domestically is going to vary based on a variety of different factors. Um, but we can kind of look at and talk about tentatively when resettlement services are delivered and when our Ukrainian persona may interact with digital technology and ask their, their questions. Um, as you can see, there are many opportunities in resettlement to reinforce messaging about digital technology and work to address unique digital literacy concerns outside of CO. Um, now, domestically, many of you uh, may not have uh, identified how to incorporate digital technology and literacy into your curriculum, and that's okay. Uh, we welcome you here today, and we do encourage you to go back and watch the COO and I training series. But we would like to share with you the steps that CORE has outlined um, on how you can use the COO and I 
uh, in your CO programming, and this does apply to specific uh, CO topics. So these are circular; they don't they kind of happen in tandem with each other and not uh, in a linear fashion. Um, but we obviously want to review the CO ONI. So somebody earlier said a challenge they're having is creating the curriculum. Uh, we don't think you should be creating a curriculum. You should already have a something, some sort of material locally that you've been using to teach cultural orientation. So it's really important to review what do you already have? And we're going to hear a little bit from Sue on why this is really important here in a second. Design programming around the COONI, engage others on the COONI, and assess refugee understanding um, of the COONI. Um, so to talk about how we incorporate digital technology and literacy into domestic CO programming is course curriculum and design officer to Philip. Sue's been working um, to create a domestic CO curriculum based on the revised CO ONI. And she has gone through the process. I really apologize for my background noise. She's gone through the process of um, review, reviewing the ONI and designing a general curriculum that's flexible and applicable to all of the United States. So go ahead, uh, Sue, I turn it over to you. Thanks, Ella. Hi, everybody. So as Ella said, my task was to create domestic curriculum materials that would be available to local providers to use and adapt and modify as needed. So the process that I took was um, to take all the ONIs and organize them into a curriculum of four sessions. And each session is tied together by a common theme. For each session um, in this curriculum, uh, there will be available a session planning guide and a slide deck that we invite providers to review and modify and pull from. And a session in this uh, in our curriculum, uh, the one that we're going to share, can last from two to three hours. Um, so we just piloted this curriculum. So I just invite you to stay tuned. In the fall, you'll have a chance to learn more and download the curriculum materials. For now, I just uh, I want to share a little bit about the process and the thinking um, about how to incorporate uh, technology and literacy, uh, tech, uh, digital technology and literacy objectives into the materials. So, um, as I was putting the materials together, um, I saw, as you will see, that digital technology is just inherently embedded in all the content, um, as you can imagine, because digital technology is such a part of our everyday lives. So although we focus on digital literacy as a topic in session four, um, the objective that you see on the screen now actually uh, shows up naturally in all the sessions. So for example, in session one, the theme is partnership. And so when we discuss um, the role of the RA, we address ways that newcomers can stay in touch with um, the resettlement staff through emails, texts, websites, setting up voicemails, um, and so forth. When we um, discuss housing, digital technology shows up in uh, conversations about paying rent and utilities online, and sometimes the need to set up online accounts with some of the household um, services that you need. And in the your new community topic, digital resources and technology, um, those skills are needed to get access to local news, to get information about community services and events and receive alerts about um, severe weather, school delays, and so forth. So in session two, the theme is well-being. And if you'll notice that the blue checks indicate that digital technology is addressed in that topic within this curriculum. Um, and so I'll just invite you to just take a moment to think about how digital technology and literacy might naturally show up in these three topics. I'll take a moment to pause and if you uh, feel inclined, you can uh, type things in, uh, in the chat. And as you're designing your curriculum, you may um, come up with the same things that show up in this curriculum, or you come up with many other ways that digital technology and literacy might show up. So an example I'll offer for session two is that within US laws, um, newcomers are expected to identify digital resources for information about laws and regulations that are related to their daily lives. For example, the DMV or the signing up for reserving um, uh, the use of a, of a local park. So let's go to session three. The theme is growth. And these are the topics that might show up. 
So um, I invite you just to take a moment and just think how might digital uh, resources, technologies and skills show up um, as we talk to folks about education, employment, transportation and learning English. I'll give you a moment to, if you feel inclined, you can type it in the chat. Okay, so I'm seeing some examples that may, that may also show up in the in this curriculum. Um, an example in session three is the use of digital technology in the process of applying for a job. And even once you get a job, there are some ways of onboarding that um, require um, newcomers to use technology. So in session four, um, the, the, the theme is the path from support to self-sufficiency. And digital technology is its own topic here, but right now I'm just gonna invite you to take a moment uh, to think about the other topics and consider how might digital literacy show up in all the topics there. I invite you to put it in the chat as, as, um, as you feel called to do. All right, so I want to go on to talk about what we did in session four. So in session four, we focus more directly on safe digital practices, the objective that you see on the screen there. And the way that we uh, provide learning around this particular objective is we, we review the objective one, but then we spend some time highlighting um, thoughtful and uh, planning and being aware of um, some of the practices that are necessary um, to stay safe and protect your information. And we do this through facilitator input, modeling, and participants will get an opportunity to apply their learning through scenarios that feature common digital scams. So thanks for uh, giving me uh, the time to share some examples of my thinking and the process that went um, into this. Uh, I hope that I got you thinking about how you might incorporate these objectives and indicators into your CO programming. So I'll turn it back to you, Ella. Thank you so much, too. Um, and I, one of the things when I was working with you on this that was a really big takeaway for me that I really want to stress here is just that she found that as she reviewed the current materials and thought about the curriculum, digital technology and literacy, that first O and I, or that first objective, kind of fell naturally into other sessions. And so, again, really taking that first step to review what you already have and looking at the digital literacy and technology O and I's and how does that fit into how things are already set up at your at your agency. Um, so thank you so much to uh, we really want to encourage you to sign up for the core connection newsletter so that you can be uh, made aware of when this resource becomes available. She's going to be leading some webinars and uh, other resources, releasing other resources later this fall. All right, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague uh, Milad, uh, who's going to talk to us a little bit about our settle in digital properties. Milad is our senior digital community liaison for settle in Facebook for Afghans. So I'll turn it over to you, Milad. Thanks, Ella. And hi, everyone. So yes, um, CORE's Settle and Digital Properties can also assist um, CO providers in supporting refugees' um, unique digital literacy needs. Um, Settle and itself is a trusted multi-platform um, digital information resource for newcomers and refugees who are coming to the United States. Um, it's made for the needs of newcomers, um, basically to prepare them or to help them understand uh, what life will be like in the United States. Um, Within Settle In, we have um, three di di different digital properties. We have our website, uh, which has over 500 resources and 10 plus languages, all designed with literacy needs in mind. Um, and on our website, we currently also house a help center, which includes longer articles about different uh, CO topics and Dari, Pashto, English, Ukrainian, and Russian languages. Um, and then we have our mobile app, uh, which the great thing about mobile app is that it can be downloaded and used um, offline by refugees. Um, and it includes short videos, um, attractive lessons, and, and badges to reward, learner, to reward and track learners' um, progress. And then we have our Facebook pages for Afghans and Ukrainians um, new who are with, and through these uh, Facebook pages, basically, we are um, interacting directly 
uh, with in two-way communication with Ukrainians and Afghans who have resettled to the United States. Um, we also conduct live events and post um, videos and other informative posts on these uh, pages. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so Settlement itself has a double track agenda, uh, meaning it's it helps us. It helps us uh, reinforce the CO onis uh, that Ella uh, mentioned earlier, and then it also helps us to uh, improve refugees' digital literacy um, with the through the process of actually using these um, platforms. And some ways that you could you could you could achieve this through are, for example, when you are sharing um, resource in a session from Settlement, um, you could also show them how to how to navigate the website, how to get to different sections of the website, giving them the basics of being able to navigate um, other websites as well. Um, um, do encourage promote uh, do encourage um, the use of the platforms outside the structured um, CO sessions um, so that students can can use at their own pace. The refugees can use at their own pace and time um, and get used with it. Um, the Settlement app, as I mentioned, can be downloaded and used offline. So that's a great resource to have to have the refugees um, download to their phones. Um, this will they, they can they can basically you can also test them in the classroom to sort of like how to show you how how they can find different pieces of information on the app um, that will get them used to um, practicing use of different apps and then you could use our Facebook and help center articles which are for higher literacy higher digital literacy uh, populations. Um, they have longer articles, like I mentioned, like I mentioned in the help center um, that they could they could they could browse to and go to different sections depending on um, what information they're looking for. Um, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, so some examples of some of the core resources that we have available um, on digital literacy, we have our digital awareness for refugees uh, in the US. That's a video on our website. It's available in over 10 languages um, that could be used. We have we have our how to use Google map, which is a Facebook video. Um, it's been uh, translated into Dari, Ukrainian, Russian and Pashto languages um, could be used uh, with refugees. Um, and some of the other videos that we have down here, banking in the United States, um, file like taxes, those are actually live events which are longer and they cover a lot of information um, with digital literacy as well. Um, so employment in the United States, for example, touches upon like what online resources are available for refugees to create a resume, um, what online resources are available, what platforms for them um, to, to go and look for jobs. Um, banking in the United States, for example, um, touches upon the issue of online banking and online banking safety and all of that. Um, and then we have our external resources page. Um, the technology technology section has a lot of useful information. Um, and that was it. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over back to Ella. Thank you so much, Malad. And I really do want to emphasize that for, th for this particular refugee persona, we know they speak Ukrainian and Russian, so the title in um, Ukrainian page is actually a great uh, companion um, to the resettlement process because they can use it to supplement their own learning and really, really take control of their own learning process. Um, so for in this particular case, uh, we can really support um, Okasana and Ivan uh, in, in navigating uh, life in the U.S. The other thing I do want to share with you all is, is uh, apologies for the issue on the slide here. Um, so Meredith, the languages for the Facebook videos are in uh, Dari, Pasto, English, Russian, and Ukrainian. It's only in the two la the languages we have for the Facebook pages at this time. So um, they all are available in English, and we will send a link out to those videos um, so that you can access them. So the other uh, piece I want to share with you in this knowledge exchange is the applications that you all are using. So in the registration, we ask you to share the top uh, digital app you use the most. Um, with refugees. And so again, using these applications like you use Settle In can support repetitions and a double track agenda and help improve digital literacy skills. So we will send this out um, to everyone uh, after the webinar. And yes, uh, Nishalini, we will be compiling everything um, from the chat notes to the resources from this webinar and sharing them all out um, as we do uh, with any, any core webinar. Um, but it, this is, it's good to know what applications are used um, so that you can also use them in your CO delivery. We have noted here, which is just used overseas um, versus which is also used um, domestically. All right, so we were going to hopefully, we had wanted to take a break, but due to just the tech issues we faced today and some other things, we're just going to go right into our breakout rooms um, because we really want to give you guys time to, to have that discussion. So. Uh, we're going to skip this break. If you do need to get up um, and go to the restroom or stretch, now's the time to do so because I'm just going to provide, we're just going to be doing some um, logistical things. 
Uh, first, Amy, do you need anybody to update their name in the participant pane or is everything good in terms of the breakout rooms? So the only people that I don't have assigned are people who registered within the last about 24 hours. Um, right. So let me open all the breakout rooms and then we will see who is still remaining in the um, Okay. In the main room, and then we'll get them assigned. All right. Hold on. Before you do that, one second. Let's just make sure our uh, guest facilitators are all promoted um, to hosts. Have we done? Um, um, and while hosts. Ella is is doing that on the back end, um, Giovanni sent me a really great question um, in a private message asking about the translations. And so all of our settle in translations are done by highly recognized. Um, Translators, they are done by humans, not by artificial intelligence. Um, usually they are done and then checked by another, another translator to make sure, I see Malad nodding there, um, to make sure that they are, they are accurate. We do occasionally get um, emails about incorrect translations. And then what we do is we, we go back to our, our translators and um, check. Often it comes back that a translation mistake was like a dialect or a local difference in vocabulary. Um, but I will put in the email for our, our inbox. You can always send us um, if you have a concern about a translation. Great. Yes, thank you so much, Amy. Um, we are humans, but we do pride ourselves on our translations and we do have a very thorough translation process as, as Amy has alluded to, which is why our subtle and resources aren't available in every single language that you would like to have. Because <laughs> it does take time, effort, um, and we, we really pride ourselves in making sure that it's uh, lingu linguistically and culturally appropriate. Um, before we get into the rooms, I do just want to provide context for everybody else who's not a facilitator. So what are we going to be doing in, the, in this room? We're going to be placing you in breakout rooms with other CO providers and um, some core facilitator, some facilitators. Uh, you're going to be placed in with other CO providers who uh, work either overseas or domestically. So if you work domestically, you're going to be with other domestic. If you work overseas, you're going to be with other overseas. We have uh, created a mural board where we've captured our persona, our timeline of services, everything that I presented to you um, today in my PowerPoint has been captured on the, this mural board, which we're gonna share a link um, to a view link in the chat. So you have your timeline of services, you have the ONI for overseas and domestic, you have the key where our persona might have questions, you have the digital apps that are used. And what you're gonna do is, is there are four scenarios we have a remote CO scenario when we have an in-person scenario for both overseas and domestic. In the scenario, you're gonna see what some background information about what's happening with your persona. So overseas, in this remote scenario, they're joined by some other folks. You know what their, their literacy concerns are. And then you're gonna discuss these three prompts. How would you cover this topic? Looking at all of the factors and qualities and things we discussed today. What is the most important information to cover in the session and why? Again, considering what are the digital literacy challenges and concerns our persona has, as well as what's in our scenario. And then what are the challenges we might face um, with this session and how might we address those challenges? So your facilitator is gonna be the one who's gonna be taking notes for you. They are not, and, and monitoring time and recording the rooms. They are not gonna be debriefing or, or um, sharing out for you. We will do that um, at, at the end of. Um, the, the session. Uh, so any questions before we go into our breakout rooms? Um, hi, everybody. Welcome back um, to, to your breakout rooms. I hope you guys had good conversations. I know that they can be pretty, uh, pretty quick and um, pretty brief and can be pretty jarring when we come back. Um, I know that I had a lot of good takeouts in um, my breakout room and uh, just a lot of good um, discussions that, that were happening. Um, so I want you guys to take um, some time. We don't have too much time to discuss today because we ran out of time a little bit, but I want folks to do, I want you to share with me, what did you learn during this exercise and how will you apply what you've learned? So if you guys could go ahead and share in the chat um, or if you want to unmute yourself and share, we would love to. Um, kind of get an idea of what was what did you learn doing this exercise and what you heard today and how are you going to apply um, what you learned. 
Yes, thank you, Tiana. We are going to be sharing out that uh, digital literacy um, activity bank and all of those resources, and I'm going to debrief on those available resources here in just a little bit. All right, well, I'm going to share a big takeaway that I heard um, in our session on Tuesday, uh, which was from an overseas participant who said that the thing that he learned in this exercise was to feel a little less overwhelmed about the amount of information he's required to cover in overseas CO programming. And seeing that we are a collaboration and we're all working together, um, it was really helpful for him to lessen that kind of burden of feeling like all the pressure is on him to cover everything that is outlined in the ONI. Um, so if anybody else has any other um, ideas, uh, so we have from Meredith, how to think about incorporating digital literacy and other topics, not just a standalone. Absolutely, that's really huge. None of the CO topics are really standalone topics. Well, the CO ONIs are written out and they kind of list things in that way. That was just done because it's the easiest way to organize the information. How you apply the ONI can easily be um, integrating topics together as Sue showed you. Her section one is comprised of three of the ONI topics and the title has nothing to do with what's in the CO ONI. Um, so some other uh, takeaways, um, Zoom interpretation service, fantastic. Um, using what is, what is in place to build from, um, not reinventing the wheel, that, that is great. Um, one of the things that I think is really an important takeaway from all of this is, is that it's really important to plan your CO session. Um, when we think about cultural orientation delivery, there is no one size fits all uh, approach for every single client that comes through and um, for the uh, clients and applicants that we work with. And really making sure that as we move forward, that we take the time before session to uh, apply what we uh, know about the populations that we're working with and take more of a student-centered approach. So before I let you go today, I do wanna share just some core resources that are available um, to you to help uh, improve your digital technology and literacy skills, both as a individual, as well as when you're working with newcomers. And we are gonna share these resources out in the follow-up um, email, uh, but we do have an activity bank. This activity bank has activities that incorporate digital technology and literacy throughout. Um, there's a lot of great uh, activities that are available. So if you're struggling and thinking through how to engage folks, this is a great resource. We also have a digital technology and literacy supplemental lesson plan. Uh, we have a variety of how-to guides. We have our external resources page. And then we have our newcomer facing materials. Now, like I said, um, we will be sending that out in our post webinar uh, survey uh, or materials. So you will have access to all of those links and you can always email CO Resource Exchange um, to get additional information. Yes, uh, Amy, absolutely. The buddy system is a great way to uh, address and deal with a variety of different learners. Um, when you're able to pair people off who have confidence with those who don't, um, it really is engaging for those who have confidence, they're able to teach. And at the same time, those who don't are able to learn. And so you're able to engage with a variety of learners. This strategy is great to apply in, in other contexts as well, like with languages and as well uh, with other topics. So again, we are at the top of um, the uh, hour and a half that we have with you all today. It's really great to see so much engagement and knowledge happening in the chat. I saw a lot of comments about how this session structure was great. Please let us know more about how the section structure was great um, or session structure was great using the post survey. We do plan to host additional exchanges structured like this, so would welcome your feedback. Uh, we also encourage you to subscribe to the Core Connection newsletter. We're going to do another exchange like this related to the US law, related to the topic of here in August. And so if you're subscribed to the newsletter, then you'll be able to stay aware of um, that uh, those, those resources. I don't think there's anything else I'm missing. Um, so I, if folks wanna stay on, we're happy to answer any other questions, um, but at this time you are free to go. Huge shout out again to Malad, to Amy, and all of my breakout room facilitators. I really appreciate you all being here today and helping to make our webinar a success. Um, thank you all so much. Please do complete that post survey. Uh, Amy shared the link in the chat. You can take that QR code. I really value your feedback and want to hear what you have to say.